Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Hello. <laughs> I get one hello. <laughs> Perfect. That's all I need to make sure I'm not like, let me just text. I know my colleague was asking if she needed help because we are. Uh, I see. Um, I'm good. So I decided not to like advertise this one so much so that we could have like a smaller, more intimate class today. So I wanted to, I do want to get my screen up. Let's see which one it is. This one. Here we go. Share. Okay. All right. Now you guys can see the Instagram page. Let me move this over here. Oh, I don't know how to, you know, what's funny is I can't see the, oh, okay, I see the chat. Okay, can somebody type something into the chat and so I can see if it shows up? Oh, okay, good, awesome. Thank you, Kim. Hello. Great, 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 great. Um, being through is also. Okay, so what I thought we would do today is like, the last class I did was very, um, you know, was a little bit broader with, with Instagram. And when I was talking with Corinne about what I thought would be useful is really to talk about the sort of the anatomy of an Instagram post and really just kind of like break down each of the sections and then sort of be able to tackle them in a little bit more detail. So, um, I mean, we can just look at anything on my, here, let's look at Pika Moose restaurant, right? So the first thing that I wanted to talk about is the writing um, in any site, so the caption. And for those of you who don't, do you know, does, I don't know if anybody follows Marie Forleo. And actually you guys can turn your, if you want to turn your, I mean, this is such, it's such a smaller group. If you wanted to turn your mics on, you can. If not, you could just type in chat, that's fine. But. Marie Forleo, I'm gonna type her name there. She writes about um, business, personal development, money. I can't even remember what like her main topic is, but she's one of the best writers that I've seen when it comes to social media. And like her email newsletters are perfect. So she's offering a copywriting class that's free on May 13th. So I would totally check that out. I just got it in the email. If you can't find it, write to me. We can, we can send it to you. Um, but she talks about how, you know, writing should be compelling and authentic and, um, you know, easy to read. And that's, when you're talking about writing for Instagram, it's the same, it's the same thing, right? It's like really important. So now this one says takeout window opens at 5 p.m. Right, and here's, <laughs> yeah, I'm a little squirrel. But just try and even look at it without the image almost at first, you know what I mean? And then like hashtag Pika Moose restaurant, hashtag takeout, hashtag farm to car, hashtag Catskills. So Pika Moose, I think has some great captions. This is not one of them. This is like just very practical, right? Monday, Mother's, menu, Mother's Day menu will be posted soon. Maybe they're not writing anything right now. They were writing stuff. Okay, so they're just writing very, very practical things, right? So these guys, in this case, this is why I wanted to talk about the different elements separately, because then you can look at how you bring it together. So they have like a really funny image and then a really simple message. That's so cute. Right? So it's, it's like- catches your attention. Yeah. So, but like they could, in my mind, they could do, they could potentially do both, right? Like they could have, so let's look at like, if we look at just, I'm just going to like scroll through some of the things on my feed. Come on. So here's something. So this is also kind of interesting. So it says, congrats, Plastic Lunch, for the write-up, and thank you for the opportunity to collab on this great doc. 
So what this person is doing is they're, they're tagging somebody. So that person then is probably going to repost it, right? Cause they're seeing it or maybe we'll repost it. At the very least they're going to see it. And they're like, you know, writing again, something pretty simple. So to me, this is like, if I didn't look at that, that's not, it's just not very exciting. It doesn't make me want to, now they're not trying to sell something. So, but it doesn't really make me want to do anything. This is my exercise person in Accord, 30 minutes of everything. So she's got words on the image, be a weed. A weed is a plant that's mastered every survival skill except for learning to grow in rows. And she says, you know, I usually rip weeds out of my lawn more times than once. That means they grow back. They always do. They're persistent. They don't give up. They're dedicated to their goal to muck up my yard. They don't play by the rules. They do whatever they need to do to survive. Being a weed means you're likely to be creative and surpass all the others who are stuck in the same routine. Oh, cool. Want to be a weed and stick around? Or do you want to be a fragile tulip and only be around for a little while? Hmm, think about it. Maybe weeds aren't so bad. So see, even if she had no image there, you would... Like if you guys type in, type into the chat box. Like what, what feeling do you get about this person? Like, how would you describe this person who's writing it? Witty, does anybody else have anything? <laughs> Just witty. You can use your voices too. Yeah. Oh my God, we have an opportunity for such a fun collaborative class. Yeah, yeah. She's, um, she's not a quitter, right? She's gonna look for a way to get it done no matter what. I like that. Yeah, and liking that means that also like likable, right? Like there's something mm -hmm. likable about it. So that's the thing is like, this is her with her brand. You know, this is her with her brand identity is, is being established by what she's writing here, right? Like, so when you look at just the writing, so if you, you, you have the, the opportunities that you have, in this post is like the writing and also the images. And what's that's basically that it. Page, Megan, what's that page? Um, this is uh, 30 minutes of everything. Actually, and this is a good page to look at because I think she does a great job of writing really like inspiring, emotional kind of things. And it, also it's a great workout, just FYI, and she's doing it online right now. Um, so if you look at like, so again, remember I was talking about like, you can look at like, you can look at the, you can look at your Instagram, the totality of your feed as a website. So this is the first thing. And this is great because you guys don't know this business, right? So you look at this business and you said, hey, this person seems likable. They seem witty. They seem like they're kind of thinking about stuff. So you go here and this is what you see. So now we're only seeing the images, right? So now all we have are the images that she's posting to get, a, to get an impression. And this is why I wanted to talk about the anatomy of a post because it's important to know that like when someone's scrolling through your feed or when something appears on the discovery page of Instagram. So this is my, so this isn't, the, this, this isn't really the, so this is the page, this is my feed of everybody I follow. So I do see the, I see the beginning part of what they write, but I mostly see the images. This little guy up here is the explore tab. So this, so this is how you get new followers. The new followers only see the images. See that they're not seeing the caption at all. So that's why it's like important to see like when do, so if I look at this and I'm like, wow, that's a pretty picture. Like I can scroll over it. I don't know the person's name. I don't know anything, but this is, this is one of the ways you get discovered. And this is one of the ways that Instagram's algorithm, you know, kind of decides like who should, who should appear here for me is based on the stuff that I click. So if I click on this and I'm deciding, is this someone I want to follow? Is this someone I'm interested in? Now I'm seeing their words pretty clearly. You know, now it's like right by, and the same is true on my phone, by the way. So I'm looking at like, it's a kind of a weird format on the, but I can share this screen. Can't share my phone screen so easily. Um, the other thing actually I should mention here, I wasn't gonna bring up in the anatomy class, but see the liked section here? So see how it says liked by Vanti underscore underscore? 
it shows you which of your friends liked that. Mm -hmm. So when you're talking about having some kind of, um, what's it called? Social, not social currency, but there's, I'm like, can't even think of the name right now, but um, basically the, the value that you get from knowing that a peer recommends something. So if, if somebody clicks on something of yours and they see that one, two, three of their friends like it, they're going to be like, oh, this must be someone I should follow, right? So it's interesting. So even that becomes kind of important. I, it's like, I, have, a, I have a quick question yeah, that's sure. kind of unrelated, but maybe is. Um, so in my newsfeed, I don't always see everybody that I'm following. It's just a handful of people that come up. Like, why is that? And is there a way to change it? You can't you can't change it unfortunately that is the mythical algorithm that is like instagram and this is the same thing with facebook they're deciding what they think you should see mm. and that's really good to know because sometimes people ask like well i don't want to post too much or i don't want to like people to be bombarded with stuff the odds are that no one's like seeing what you post anyways i mean that's the truth even the people that follow you there's a very good chance that they are not ever going to see what you post because it doesn't display it or it doesn't, you know, and the way the algorithm makes those decisions changes. And this is what brands try and like figure out. Like if I post, you know, I know that one thing that does impact it is you want to post regularly, but not like ridiculously. Like, so, mm -hmm. you know, post in the feed three, four times a week, post in the story a little bit more regularly like those are the things that people will say generally do work. If you start to post in the feed like 40 times a day, it'll actually penalize you because it thinks like, Hey, they don't want people like, blow, I don't want people blowing up my feed here, you know? So, so, you so said like even just knowing, like taking a minute and being like, if I write a caption, who is even going to read my caption is important. Right. But so like, let's go back to 30 minutes of everything for a second. Hey, Megan. Yeah, sure. That post regularly three or four times a week and a story um, is more regularly? That's what I've heard, but I'm not like, I don't try and optimize that stuff okay. so much. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I definitely don't post three times a week in my feed. I don't think I do. I post more in my stories. So if you go back here, so now like if you think about like the process is like, it's like, a, it's like the sales process for a house. You're like selling it each step of the way kind of. Mm -hmm. So you're like the first thing that they see, they, they, you don't know, just like with a website, if they're going to come to this page because their friend told them about you or if they're going to discover you through that explore feed that I just showed and you just have like a really beautiful image or interesting image. You don't really know, or, or they're going to link from your website or from something else to your Instagram page. So now that you're here and you're like, okay, this is like an exercise thing. It's an accord, but oh, it looks like she has some like cool quotes or whatever, right? So now you click on it and now you can see like in this case, she didn't, she did not post anything for the caption. She used all hashtags. Now she may feel like, cause she, you know, they posted, you're always stronger than you think. And then, you know, she doesn't necessarily need to post things, but let's look at the hashtags for a second, because right now she's what, what the hashtags, people will read the hashtags as copy. Your eye flows over it more quickly because you, your brain says this is something they're just putting up there to like, you know, get, um, what do you call it? Get like more likes and more followers. But the truth is that this says something about you. So if you look at Tanya and you look at like Accord, Hudson Valley, women fitness entrepreneurs, love your body, body positivity, right? That's really specific. If her hashtags were lose weight fast, hashtag um, kick an ass every day, hashtag, you know, workouts online, you would have a really different feeling, right? just from the hashtag. So the hashtag is allowed, the use of this hashtag works as a caption. It, it, it enhances her image. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. Cause I feel like sometimes people put hashtags in and things. Nope. I mean, I usually put, I usually put my hashtag in the, in the first comment right below that. 
so that it's not even like a part of it. So it is a little bit separate, but I'm very aware of choosing hashtags that don't seem too commercial for us or too like salesy or weird because that's an important part of our brand is authenticity and we differentiate ourselves from normal real estate agents and yada, yada, yada. So like here, I'm just gonna go to another one of hers. Take time to smell the flowers today. Thank you, Sea Change Flower, for these beautiful flowers whose fragrance makes me smile big. Smiley face. It's nice, like it makes you feel nice, right? Mm -hmm. And Sea Change is another business. Yeah, and so what happens is then you click on Sea Change, which I've never heard of, and you're like, oh, ooh, this looks cool. Feel so see what happened? Like actually without even just in this class, I was like, oh, let me follow this. <laughs> so that's why, so Sea Change will appreciate that Tanya did that. Oh. So it's a way to connect with a business. It promotes that business. And now I found it. And I'm like, wow, this is beautiful. How come I've never seen this before? Love those flowers. Yeah. And where are they? I have no idea, but it says Hudson Valley. Oh, okay. But see up here, so the, so we see where it says, remember I showed you where it said liked by? So it says followed by CCE Ulster, a farm in Accord, heart and solely flowers. So these are the ones, these are, these are the, my followers or people I follow who also follow them. Oh. So it's constantly reinforcing like, oh, there's, this is something good. You know, this is something that, um, I think it's, it's actually kind of better to look at this not with real estate right now because you can kind of look at the concepts rather than like critiquing like one person's account. But um, we can also look at some of your accounts later if you want, if anybody wants to be a guinea pig. But so I think that like, if you look at my posts, I have a slightly different <laughs> approach because I'm super wordy. I'm like the wordiest wordy person ever. It's not always good. But so I write longer things. Oh, wow. That's in your post. That's all in my post. Yep. And this is one of the things that people would say, like, don't write that, you know, don't write that much. And I was like, Ugh, but I have so much to say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what do you guys think? Like what, I mean, what here makes this not as annoying as it could be? Like what makes this, like, do you, I mean, is there something that anybody sees that makes it feel like, you know, like less, and you could either say it out loud or, or type it, um, but is there anything here that makes it feel less wordy or, or is there a place where it feels, it does feel very wordy? So my thought is that there's breaks in it. So you could read or, and stop or not stop. So th there's breaks in it. So it's not like this big, long, blah, 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 blah. And you have paragraphs basically with the spaces. So, so it catches your attention to certain words, right? And if I'm, if I'm looking at this right now, I look at it and I go, dang, I should have put another one here. <laughs> you know what I mean? I should have actually broken it up more. And this is why for those of you who came a little bit later, there's a woman named Marie Forleo who I love and love how she writes. And she's, she's a huge like YouTube social media person. And she's offering a free copywriting class on May 13th. So I would totally sign up for that. Like, I don't know much more about it, but like, if you, I just got an email about it and if you can't find it, let me know. But, um, you know, her stuff is always broken into like tiny little paragraphs because our eye skims that. Mm -hmm. So now the other way to look at it when you're looking at like, um, like if you actually do web design stuff or like m m digital marketing, you, one of the ways that you can review things, and I, I've never done this, I've had clients who've done this, is you have actual eye tracking software. So you would test it and you would see where somebody clicks away. You would see if somebody like looks back at the photo at this point, you would see how far they read. You would, you would literally measure all of that. But if you do that in your own brain, like one of the things like, like if you look here, maybe this is an obvious question, but like, what are the things in this section that I'm displaying now that stand out to you guys? The ads stand out to me. I mean, I can't really see it, but it's the ads. My eye goes right to the ads. The ads? At the at Rough Draft New York. At, at Rough Draft, right. Yeah, the links that you have in there. What, what, what would be the next thing that stands out? Community center, coffee, food, books, things to do. 
So sometimes it's like literally like numbers, you know, can stand out. Wow. Like the fact that Uptown is, you know, like all of these things like are oh, kind of breaks great. stuff up. No, but I mean, you're right. Like you're, I mean, you're looking at it, Community Center, Bear Coffee Food, the word as I bold it with, that means like shorthand for bold with a little asterisks. Oh, cool. Sometimes looking at things like this, like, you know, longer words with, you know, so I've done this for so long that when I write, it's like, I kind of know how to get the attention to things. That's so or cool. like you may have gotten the memo that Kingston is hot, H-O-T. <laughs> yeah. And the, the, the way to do this, by the way, that's interesting. Instagram doesn't allow you to have paragraph breaks. It's not like physically possible. So that's why I have these little, there, there are, there are, there is software and I could probably find it that would allow you to write it in the software in a way that does have paragraph breaks. And if anybody knows that they can definitely type it into the chat box. But Instagram itself, you can't just like do a, par like if you do a paragraph break, it just disappears and all gloms back together. So you have to do a, a hard return. So you have to return right after the end of the sentence above and then put something there and then do another return. You could put a star there. You could put a little arrow thing going side. You could put like a line like I do. But if you even have a space after it, like if I had a space after this asterisk and then the, and then did a hard return, it somehow doesn't work. It goes right back up and squashes it all together. So it has to be, right, you have to put your cursor right after the last letter or character, hard return, something else, hard return. That's how you can make these broken up. Megan, have you ever had someone tell you that it's too long of a, like a, um, a description? You know what? I have only had one marketing consultant tell me that, which is funny because like, that is like, so we were talking about that. Like I write really long and she's like, these are really long. And I'm like, yeah, but here's what I think. This is my theory with it. So no one, no buyer or audience person has ever said anything other than they like love this Instagram. Right. Yeah. So I'm like, People who are not that into this house are going to be like 385, this house, move on anyways. Mm -hmm. People who are sort of into this house are going to be like, huh, what do I, what do I want them to know? So this is just like the kind of newsletter, newspaper thing, you know, mm -hmm. like what's above the fold was like one of the ways to like decide, like, what's your headline? I want them to know some people actually, and I should say this, some people don't put prices in here. I always do. When I do our marketing, I don't do any pricing. I just put information on the house. I used to do this where I used to do a big, long paragraph, whatever you want to call it. And I've actually had people tell us and comment that it's too long. So we stopped doing it. I think it depends on how you write it. So again, like, so when I write this, so this is the, so this is very conversational. Like this is not my listing. Yeah. Description. You know, it's like, blah, 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 blah. This is split here. There's a hot tub, the current owners, you don't have to learn how to use a septic system. Like this is not, so this is very different from my normal, the normal description. It's very much like, I'm your friend telling you about this house now. Yeah. So I think that that helps, but also like, even if they only read to here, great. You know what I mean? Like all I need, all I need people to read to is th these, these three things. Yeah. That's the honest to God truth. And then if they don't want to scroll further, God bless, like no one's making them scroll. Mm -hmm. And this is actually, you know what, Christina, I think this is like a really, this is a really good, this is a good moment for me to say something that I haven't said, is that like, people have stupid ass opinions about your, your everything, right? Yes, they do. Do you know what I mean? And it's really hard. And this is what I've realized is like, when you're doing something that feels a little bit different or feels a little bit, and this is what I was saying about writing authentically can mm -hmm. feel really like exposing. Like it feels really like, Ugh, if I write in this informal way, like I'm not representing myself professionally or I'm not like doing it this way. And so somebody may say something. Mm -hmm. And the truth is that like, I believe that to do something really well, you have to have some people who hate it. Yeah. That's what I believe to have like raving fans. You have to have some people who are like, wow, what she's doing. Like I had someone, I had someone from Manhattan. It freaked me out for like months. And she was like, I started recommending your site to people. And then they went there and they were just like, why is there another Christmas market? Why are you talking about this local thing? They thought they were going to like hear about just houses. Mm -hmm. And so I literally had this like total crisis as much as I've said what I just said to myself, to you, to other consultants, to other um, clients that I worked with in marketing for years. I was like, is my whole thing stupid? 
Like literally I was like, should I only be posting houses? Like, oh my God, I should never have local content. This is so stupid. And it was like one person saying something. So yeah. I would say that like, you know, ultimately like the, you know, in a perfect world, I would analyze the engagement with each of these posts and I would know what happens and I would know all that. But I would say that you would, what I can say is that people are more likely to say something dumb than, or like something is dumb than something is great. They like kind of forget to say it's great sometimes. So yeah, I think it's semi-controversial to have long, long things there. But the reason I did it also is because I realized that I liked it when other people did it. And I was just like, hmm, it's so unusual. I kind of like it. So this is, and if I don't, and we like literally just don't even have a website for our business. So if I'm going to write something longer, this is our only place. So that's, that's another only place. Yeah. Okay. It's another factor. So, but the truth is, is that again, like what I, the most important information is all at the top right here. By the way, we got two cash offers so far above ask already and just put this house up one day ago. Wow. Wow. So think about the, okay, so, and you know, we get to the anatomy of, I'm skipping a little bit in the way that I wanted to do this, but if you look at the anatomy of a post, so now for all those yep. people who are considering offers, they look at this and they go, oh shit, a thousand people liked this. So that's another thing that's important to look at. Like, where is that? And then I did a video of it. That is definitely not it. Yeah. Yeah. So what we can see here, the video has 4,100 people saw it. Wow. That's great. So what's good for me as the listing agent for this house is these people who are putting in offers, I could be like, look, over 4,000 people just watched this video. You know, if I look at the statistics even a little bit more. And seven people commented. Yeah. So in this case, seven people commented, they don't normally they don't, I can usually see more statistics. So this one, 37 people commented. Wow. So usually we can tell, like, see this one, 95 people commented. So usually I can tell more about like how many offers we're going to get by the number of comments, which is interesting. So are these all your listings on here? Just your listings? No, this one is one of Beth Allfelt's. Oh, nice. So I posted this for her. We used to post other ones also, but I really, I, we are so, this is another agent who um, is in Sullivan County. So we just don't have the capacity to handle the buyer leads that we get when we post things currently. So right now we're not posting everything. So how do people find the posts? Well, the way that most people find things Let's just look at that for a second because this gets back to the words you use, right? So if I type in Hudson Valley, it's not a Google search, right? So the first thing it's gonna give me are people. And the first thing it gives me are people that I follow or that follow me. So these are all people that I follow. So Instagram's assuming that I'm looking for stuff like that. They're actually all people that I follow. I'm trying to get to where I, no, these are all still people I follow. Um, I don't know, so we looked at like Orange County. Well, we're probably gonna get like, okay, so here's, so there's, so this is better. There's a few that have Orange County. So now when I type in Orange County, I get, you know, Middletown, I get Visit Orange County, New York, um, all, all of these things. So what this means to me as a writer is that none of this is based on the captions, right? So you do not have to worry about kind of search engine optimization based on your captions. You do have to worry about that with your name. So. I just lost you. Can you hear me? No, I'm sorry. Captions, name. Yeah, so, right. So if you had Orange County, so if this was pulling all the way from the captions, then I would say, okay, you have to worry about like using the word Orange County again and again in your captions, but you don't. Like when you're writing on websites, you do. You wanna use the, you wanna use the terms that you wanna be found by again and again and again. Now here, it, what it does pull up is real estate, right? So now it's pulling up 
locations. And it's pulling up um, hashtags. Mm -hmm. So this is how people are finding you. So this is what, th it is important. Like we only have like an hour here today, but it's kind of important. This is why I wanted to pick it apart a little bit and be like, what does it mean? What does it mean if somebody finds the location? That's also relevant. We go to the post, see where it says Kingston, New York here? Okay. I put that location there. Oh, okay. And that's because sometimes people search by location. So if they click on Kingston, this is everything that these are all, see, these are, so this is another way that people find you. So this is the top post. Look, it's me and my like face mask here. <laughs> these are the top posts for Kingston. And these are the most recent posts for Kingston. So if somebody's following a location, they might follow a location, they might also follow a hashtag. So the location is when I'm, you know, when I'm writing the post, I determine like where the location is. It'll ask you, it'll say like, is there a location? Does that make sense? Nice mask. Thank you. Yes, it's from, well, and so if you look at this one, so this is one from, I tagged it. So this is like, I don't always write like ridiculously long things. So here you can look at what I wrote here. I'm trying to smize above my eighth bell mask, taking photos of my new listing today so I can have some visual record of this new time of ours. Also, I learned that one should smooth one's hair before one puts one's plastic gloves on because I just gone like this and my hair was like. <laughs> so I got like a bunch of like fun, yeah. you know, comments. So, so when you're writing, people are also going to see this, you know, here I am talking to people. So if they know that person, they're seeing me talking to that person. Oh, you know, Julie, cool, you know? And then Becky, I hear in the comment, I'm tagging Becky at Fringe Design. Now, Becky at Fringe Design comes in in the comment and says, I'm saying, you, real estate, you look beautiful as always. Even when you come in the door, your hair looks great. Can't wait to see you ASAP after all this is over. So now I'm interacting publicly with a business owner or with my hairstylist there. Julie's one of my comments. Julie is one of my clients. One of my past clients, Becky, is my actual hairstylist. Dichotomy Interiors is a friend who's also an interior designer here, who a ton of people know. This is Barry, who's you know part of our um, our Keller Williams group. So this is the thing: is like when you're thinking about the words, it's all of it. It's not even just like in the caption. It's like mm -hmm. how you reply to other people. If you tag them there, they're gonna see it. So this is why I kind of wanted to talk about the like the anatomy of it. So my post, maybe that's important to say, my post isn't done after I post it. And then I'm interacting with people. Ah, I don't know how to go back. So if we look at that, so that's kind of like, you know, we're talking about the captions, we're talking about, um, you know, the other thing I would talk about, and I, I rarely use them, but let's, who has a, who has a hashtag they, wanna, they want me to search for? You just type one in or say it. Can you do, um, I just, just because I want to see if it works, hashtag the Gibbs team? Sure. It'll work. If you guys use it. Yeah. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it slowly, okay? Because I want you to see what happens as I'm typing. So first we have the, so it starts, you know, it'll start giving us results right away. So now I'm like getting the Gibbs sister. So I have the Gibbs team. Are these all your posts? <laughs> Some of them are. Oh my God, it's another KW. Wait. Oh, that's so funny. What on earth? There's another KW team using that hashtag. That's so funny. So like that's Linda. There's us. So yeah, there's some of our posts that are in here. Yeah, no, all of your, all of your posts will be in here. But what's yeah. good to know is that like, so That's if you were to tell a client, follow hashtag the Gibbs team, they're also going to see this team in like Texas. Oh. So the other thing, and the other thing to note when you're thinking about like words, the words part of the post is like, let me just make sure no one's in the waiting room because I'm being the host also today. Um, they might not remember what you said. So they might type in Gibbs team. 
So I would be like, okay, great, here they are. So you just wanna like check this stuff out and make sure nothing is weird, you know. And what I would do, Christine, is I would use both of those, right? Like it seems annoying, but I would put in both the Gibbs team and Gibbs team so that See, you- like this, all like this Gibbs team was like NCIS Gibbs team. Oh, wow, right. Is there a Gibbs team on CIS? Yes. yes. Yeah, Jethro Gibbs is the main character who- Oh my, yeah, there it is. My dad named our dog after him. <laughs> I love it. So that's where, so like having, so you could be more specific even in the hashtag. So if you wanted to be like, the Gibbs team and why or something. If you didn't want to have to put a million of them, see that's uh -huh. no results are found. So you guys could kind of own that hashtag. Or the Gibbs team, blah, blah, blah. You know what Oh, I'm yeah, that's better, right? Would that be better? Yeah. For I think so. Because if you tell people, because I think, because what you can do is you can tell people you should always, because here, so see this hashtag? I can click follow and then I will see, I'll see everything. You can follow a hashtag and you can follow a person. So this kind of gives them double opportunity to, to see things. Or you could have like, you know, you could be like, oh, oh, you should always follow the Gibbs team houses, you know, or Gibbs team listings or something. You know what I mean? You could do, you could do kind of hashtags that are specific for some segment of your audience. So that's, that's a way to think about like how you use your own hashtags. But let's just pick like, whatever, like if you use a hashtag like this, real estate, there's 36 million posts there the odds that you're going to be, I mean, you, it will, it will go by this page in two seconds. Yeah. Right. And then most recent, it'll be like, ding, 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 ding. so you want to use a combination of ones that are big, like, so, but using the words real estate, if you think about a caption as a way to like inform also as information and as text, then real estate is important information. So if somebody looks at it, they know right away, this is a real estate post. So you might not be that bothered with it. You get to things like, um, I don't know, there are some design ones, like so interior design, 91 millions, obviously that's gonna be a ton, but then there are ones like interiors for all with like 250,000 posts. Interior for all, like, so you kind of, you don't want to use hashtags that have like 35 posts, if you're using them, or ones that have like 25 million, generally. That makes sense. So I, again, like I do not, I, I would think of hashtags, I would think of hashtags first as information and second as a way to get new followers. And that's a whole different topic anyways. But in the context of this, like the anatomy of a post or whatever, I would say that like, I would, I think it's important to really, um, to think of it like regardless of if you're using it for SEO, they're going to see it. Like your people reading it will see it, even if they look at it fleetingly and it will say something about you. So let's just click on one of these posts. So this is an instance where they, they also put the, um, the hashtags in the second, this is the uh, first comment. But they're not, they're not writing anything here. You know, these are just beautiful images. So let's switch over to images before we lose too much time because that, you know, we have like, so now we have like the, let me have this refresh. We have the caption, we have the location, we have, you know, what's happening in the comments. These guys I also think are quite good. Village Coffee. So here's another, so this is, to me, this is nice. They're here, tread light farms, gorgeous bunches, and early happy Mother's Day to our beautiful mama, Anthea. So this is one of the owners of the shop. So we have, we have the cap, we have your name, we have the caption, we have what happens in the comments. Now we can look at the images. Right? So again, it helps to think about where is somebody going to see these images. So almost nobody's going to see them this big, right? Like me looking at this on my like screen bigger, you know, which is bigger for you guys is like not how they're probably going to look at it. 
I'm looking at they may phone. they may if they like the photo on their phone they'll click on it so you know it's important that it looks good that way also but when you think about like you know the two ways to me that are most important to look at this is like what's the visual impression somebody gets when they just scroll through my feed would would you have a sense of what this is even about just by scrolling and who i am as a person or who, what our business is as a business, actually, more importantly. And then the second criteria for choosing images is, is it something that are at least some of my images, ones that if somebody was on this explore feed or if they're following their friends, you know, their followers, is it something that when it comes through really tiny is gonna be a pretty interesting, are they gonna wanna click on it basically? Are they going to like it? Are they going to, you know, go further? So this is, there's a couple of things here that are kind of interesting. So there's a theory, um, not theory, but there's like, you know, psychologic, you know, tested marketing thing that like the brain wants to complete things. Like one of the things is really hard to resist. Like the brain wants to like kind of finish a thought or they want to go, go to the, end of something. So what that means is like that is most people I think believe that that's the primary reason that um, asking a question is a headline or having like the five things that is so impossible to resist because your brain's like five things. Oh shit. What are those five things? 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 Or if the question is like, what's this market like? 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 It wants to like complete it. So this before is pretty brilliant, right? Because what I can see here, this means this is a slideshow. There's another image behind it that's going to show me the after. Somebody wants to look at that. <laughs> it's like almost impossible not to click, click on like, it. I need to see it. <laughs> yeah. So here's like the before. Yeah. So what you can see here is there are four images. That's what these four dots is. This is a slideshow. Yeah. And there's oh, a, nice. Yeah. It, it just before, after. Like your brain is like, please, it. please click. So the other one that I saw here, oh, well, yeah. that was like, please click. It's these ones that are like before unsweetened almond milk, after whipped coffee latte. Mm. You're like, how did they make this delicious thing from this? Yep. It does the same thing to your brain. And then obviously there are ones where you're just like, 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 love. And here's a great, so this is a great example. Like I'm super into Brussels Griffin. So it'll always, we don't have one, but I really want one someday. It'll always show me things like this. So there's, when I'm, when I'm looking here, so this little um, arrow on the side here, this means to me that it's a video. Oh. Let me find. So this little image here means that there are multiple photos. So once you use Instagram more, you're like, I can look at it and know, oh, there's more photos behind here, or there's, you know, this is a video. So, but Instagram is the one that, that decided this should be really big for me. So I can click on it. I can hit play. Oh my God, <laughs> class is over. I'm watching this on repeat. <laughs> Bye. Oh my God, look how cute. I don't know how to stop it now. Well, so cute. So, so look at this dude, like, look, look at this caption. So now I've like experienced, I've seen it. I, it looks super cute. I noticed that it's a video and now I'm like, oh, I have to see the video. It's the same thing. So having this slideshow or the video, you're like, oh, I have to click further. After a busy day of eating bunny turds in the backyard, it's time to settle in for a good old nap. So we've got, um, you know, emojis are definitely a way that help break things up. I'm too lazy to use those a lot, but like those definitely help. Um, and again, like if you look at the, if you look at the, the hashtags here, they're using them as content. Hashtag bunny turd eater. Hashtag that's me. Like that's not, that's funny. That's not like, they're not thinking people are going to be following those. Right. Okay. But so then they do have ones like tiny puppy and bunny love, death face, whatever. Well, no, actually these are all, these are all funny. Dinner time. Griffin lovers is maybe the only one that's not. Um, so I think that like, and Susan, what I would say is that like, it, 
you know, I noticed that there's some, like, so for more general comments, I would say that it's probably best to, not comments, but like, I think it's good to watch the first class that we did, because the first class we did, we covered a lot of things like, you know, overall, like, should you do the separate Instagram page for business or personal one? Because it's a very, um, you know, it's a personal choice, but I would watch that other class. And if you have any questions, you can definitely let me know. And um, Corinne should have that link. So if we were gonna go, um, okay, does anybody, we have like 15 minutes left. So does anybody want me to look at their, at their Instagram thing and we can use that as sort of an example of stuff? Cause I mean, the one thing I wanna say for images is that this is, the images are 90% of what's going to cause someone to click here, right? So you have to have great images and they have to look great small. So, and that means like cropping, you know, taking an image of a house and cropping it a certain way. It's like a pain in the butt. It's like the MLS images don't always look good, you know? Yes, okay, me, you could do mine. Okay. Offering the Gibbs team. There we go. Okay. I have been slacking, I will admit. It's okay, I'm not gonna, so, okay, so first of all, right, one of the, one of the useful things to know is that, look at me not seeing what dates these are, right? Mm -hmm. So I don't know, when I look at it, I don't know if someone has posted 25, like all of these last week, or a whole, or a whole, um, you know, a year ago. So, but what, you know, so what, so if we look at it, you know, if we look at it quickly and we say that like, so again, like I'm going to, I'm just going to like say a couple of things and there's always room for improvement for everybody. Right. And these guys that, that are killing it in a billion different ways. And I think that um, the question is also like, and so this is, so this sort of, I, I just realized that like the, actually, no, I will ask you this. The, the question I would ask like a marketing client would be like, Christina, do you know, what's your primary goal for your Instagram page? Is it like getting direct leads? Is it more of a branding thing? More of a branding thing. And I will say that our Facebook page has a lot more activity than Instagram. Okay. So one of the things that I do is that, cause I started with Instagram is I, I don't have a proper Facebook page, but I just like, we have a business page kind of reserved and I just automatically have them post to both, which is not necessarily a best practice, but because I'm not going to have us, I'm not going to like spend as much time on Facebook ever. Mm -hmm. It's better than not reaching those people. So that's one thing to say. So the other thing, so if you're looking at branding, so this to me, this is the other anatomy of a post that we didn't talk about, which is your uh, bio, right? So mm -hmm. if I looked at this bio, I would be like, so there's a very, and, and your profile picture. Right, so if I look at the profile picture, I look at the, um, the name, I look at this. There's a couple of things here that I would say are um, like, first of all, like insider language, which is like KWHVU, unfortunately, which I know you have to put there, yeah. but like that might be possibly confusing for somebody. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have KW, which might also be confusing. I don't see the word real estate anywhere. And I can tell you that some people in our area don't know what Keller Williams is. I know that sounds really dumb. Um, I, it says here that you're in the Hudson Valley, but I don't know where, like you could be in um, like Hudson or Athens or whatever. Like I'm, I don't know that. So those are all things that like, so if you think about the top of the fold in a post, you think about, I mean, we're talking about, a, we're supposed to be talking only about posts there to limit it, but like, I'll just mention this briefly. It's the same thing with your page. If somebody goes to your page, you want them to like right away be like, where do they work? What do they do? What's their vibe? Mm -hmm. So my vibe here is that this is like, this is a very serious site. Like they're NY and PA licensed. They're this, they're like not funsters. And then I get down here and I'm like, oh, Cinco de Mayo, that's cute. And then there's like some delicious food thing. So they're, so in terms of the images and here's like Christina's cute face and like other people on Red Day, you know? So it's sort of like, I would say this not as fun as the images, right? The images to me make me feel, make me feel more like welcome and like, oh, I could be one of these buyers. People um, also click and comment a lot more on images of people. FYI. Like, so if there's a human in a picture, it usually gets like a lot more activity. So, 
And then when you think about like, you know, what's going to be displayed here. So see how he kind of says sold by the Gibson, but it's all in the corner. I'm again, not like in a perfect world. Like, so this is, is kind of hard to read on Instagram. So you would want to have just the image with like maybe a word sold on it or just the image. Like the reason I don't do that is because I'm like too lazy. Right. So I just like, so I'll, I put the sold things in my stories and then say it's sold. If I was slightly less lazy, I would put it here and put sold on it. You know what I mean? So that like, yeah. would, or I would put for sale on it really big because then somebody would see that. So you look at this and then it says another home sold. This is like a little bit of a broken gift. Congratulations to the seller of 38 Winter Tour in Woodbridge. We wish the homeowners nothing but happiness in their new home. So what I would say is that this feels really warm and lovely, right? We wish them nothing but happiness. Um, this feels like, yay, we're excited about what we do. I don't know that I would put the address anymore because I don't know, just in case someone's like creeping on them. Not that it matters. And if you want them to be able to look it up, I guess. Yeah. So I th was thinking the same thing, but um, a lot of the marketing classes that Danielle and I took, and then Danielle took a marketing class with Adam Rothfuss-Burgers, um, marketing director. And she says that she always puts the address in there just to say, oh, wait, I like that house. Do you have any other houses in that area kind of a thing? I personally wouldn't want my address on there that I just bought the house. For. Yeah, I think it's a, yeah. I mean, I would say that you could say like in Fallsburg or something. You know what I mean? I don't know. Like that might be, that depends. So to me, like, and, but all of this stuff is like the spring market starting early with all these accepted offers. So you can see it's a, this is a slideshow. Mm hmm let me look at there's there's and I, I think that like so if you okay so let me actually let me look at one more thing here so if we're looking at the anatomy of a post see how there so Greenville is here so everybody following that will be able to see it mm -hmm. just sold congratulations to our clients so also what I would say is that like I I it's really hard I try and vary that message a little bit but it's mm -hmm. it's it's really hard to be like, welcome to our town or blah, we'll have a great time. Like, so it's, yeah. you end up kind of saying the same thing, but you know, and most people aren't ever, I mean, the other point here is that most people are never going to be looking at this mm -hmm. in as much detail as we are right now. So these are the, down here is bold and highlights. These are the stories that Christina's decided to save here. So you can click on them and look at those too, but no, I'm not looking at that. We're looking at the posts, sorry. So I might go, why is there a Cinco de Mayo thing there? So it says, happy Cinco de Mayo. Let's talk about it, Cinco de Mayo, you know? So I think that like, so here's an opportunity to me, you have like a really cute little taco. So I think it could have said happy Cinco de Mayo in here. And then here you could be like, hey, this sucks right now. We know you're all at home. We hope you have all the taco fixings to have a great Cinco de Mayo. That's a good idea, yeah, that's a good idea. Do you know what I mean? Talk, so it's really like kind of bringing it. What, what I like that say? one, Beth. Let's talk about, let's talk about real estate. <laughs> let's talk about, yeah. Or that, like even being like yeah. funny like that, you know? Yeah. Call us to taco about any, like if you want to sell your home, whatever. Like it's, it doesn't all have to be back to real estate. So I, I like the fact that you did this. It's not totally real estate, but it's also not like totally related. Do you know what I mean? You're not like. Yeah. And I also saw one of the classes that I took, um, people like when you post personal and business, but I'm not a huge fan of that. I feel like your personal stuff should be on your personal page and then your business should be on your business page. So if we, I hear what you're saying and I, that's what I'm saying. So I had, a, I had a marketing person who told me at the beginning of my thing, like, don't put your face on it. Don't put your dog on it. Don't even mention your name. Like if oh, somebody really? doesn't like the dog or your glasses or whatever, they're not going to want to work with you. I think that if you think about the sale process being like trust buy, whatever, you know, I think it's like trust buy, like how can they like you if you don't put personal stuff there? Yeah. I, well, let me, let me show you another one. I think we have, we have five more minutes here, but. Um, no like and trust. No like trust, exactly. Um, oh my God, I can't remember their name. It's the Lily K team. 
this is funny though, right? So Lily K, Lily K. Let me, I can't remember their, I can't remember their Instagram handle, but they have a really beautiful, I think they do a really beautiful job of all this stuff. So it's Sotheby's, so it's like super fancy, right? It's like whatever, they, but they do a great job. This is one of the sites that I love. I think they do an amazing thing. I like their website. Yeah. Oh my buying, God. Buying upstate, right. But you know what's interesting? I couldn't remember. It worries me sometimes about upstate real estate too, just saying that. So, um, so this one has no personal stuff, mm. zero. Mm. But what I would say is that it feels personal in the way they write about things. The slow thaw happening in the Hudson Valley has us, so they're using first person, dreaming about some of our favorite, fav favorite summer photo shoots from last year. Swipe through for some perfect summary escapism. So that's the other way to handle it. They're not posting about their dogs or their cats or whatever, but they're saying we, they're, you, you would get a sense of, these, of this team as a person based on the images they post and the captions, I think. Well, this one is like more of the, just the listing. So I think that this, this to me is the way to do it where you don't have to post about yourself. What's their page name? Buying Upstate. And yeah, like uh, amidst this crisis, and so maybe part of it is writing in first person. You know, amidst this crisis, we could not possibly be more grateful for our location, access to nature, and privileged to be breathing fresh air every morning and having the opportunity to self-isolate in one of the most beautiful places of the world. While it may be difficult to think of the future with certainty at this moment, our team is doing our best to help you continue your search for your dream house upstate while following the latest recommendations on self-isolation and well-being. So here, you can see, this is a great way. They broke up their, see, they broke up their thing with little numbers. These are all the ways we can help you. Find the full length in the bio. And then they have, you know, they have the um, hashtags. So I think that this is, you know, and then they have team, Hudson Valley hat, like listings, press. I don't know what PTW, oh, property of the week, maybe? blog. So I guess we only have a couple minutes left, but does anybody have any, like, I mean, the idea is to really, like, kind of pick apart each of these little things so that you can, um, yeah, just sort of understand how they fit together and how people are going to look at them. Does anybody have any, like, burning questions or Drinking from my humongous water thing. When you started, Megan, you just, I mean, you just kind of winged it, right? You didn't follow anything. You just picked it up and. Yeah. And I like that you shared, you know, you're a bit, you're vulnerable because you're, you know, open to criticism and you really just have to not care about it. I mean, and look at this. It's like there's, thir I'm 1300 posts into this. Do you know what I mean? So that's like a lot of, experience yeah yeah so i mean this is like i kind of so i really would look at it like cooking is that now i can i can express myself the way i want to express myself given my constraints of time and mm -hmm. and weirdly our constraint of not being able to post much because of um we can't handle any more buyer leads and there's like no inventory here so, you know, so that's like, so those are like some actual constraints. Yeah, so I was going to say, how much time do you actually spend on doing all of this? Well, I mean, if you look at it, like these three, this was all like one day when I did it. Right. And then like this, I posted in two seconds. This is a picture of my dog. Mm -hmm. This is another listing. So each individual thing doesn't take a lot of time. I like it. So I do spend a lot of time on it. Instagram. So I am spending more time liking things and it's like one of my fun things that I do. Mm -hmm. Like creating these posts is not a fun thing. And someday I would love to have a marketing person go in and, but what I would say, this is a good point is that like, what I would say is that I pay more for photography because I know that we're going to market things on Instagram. Yeah. 
And I prefer things that are kind of an editorial feel like these head on shots, because I know this is, this is the main thing that people are going to see for us. So the images are so important and sellers understand that. Do you do live videos? Yeah, we just did this, this real talk with Megan and Monica it was so much fun. This was so much fun on, on Instagram live and we, we, <laughs> we recorded it and we posted it, but we had 60 people. I mean, like we had a ton of people, but there was like almost never less than 60 people for over an hour. Oh my gosh. Watching us just talking about the market, asking a ton of questions. And like, so we're going to, what we're going to do is we're recording it and putting it on YouTube. And we've already had a mortgage person and an inspector who want to join us. And, um, and I do live videos at houses. I do. Yeah, I do a bunch of things. So this one, this video for this house, I did a live video at the house and then I just did a regular video that was a little bit, I was doing my first live video with a face mask on and it was like, I felt like I was suffocating. So it was really awkward. So that was not one I wanted to save. So. Cool. So this was great. Thank you. It's just. Yeah, so I don't even know what the next topic is, but we're going to think about it. <laughs> we have another one next week and, um, yeah, it's, it's nice to, I know, I really appreciate the opportunity to be able to think about this in a little bit more of a structured way also myself. So, um, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm glad you guys joined me here and I'm glad that we could have a smaller, more interactive class. I'm going to do the same thing for the third one too, is I'm not going to advertise it. So hopefully it'll just be like, you know, KW folks are very special friends who, uh, um, come to it so oh I just wanted to thank you because after um I went to your first one um I was less intimidated by you know starting on Instagram and the main question I had I'm sorry my husband's mowing the lawn the main question I had um was like I'm not I'm not young right so is it like gonna feel inauthentic for me to like try to use Instagram as somebody that's not you know, in that right age group or whatever. And the feedback I got was, you're, don't worry about it. There's a lot of people out there that use that and get over yourself and just get out there and start posting. So actually, I'm so, so glad that you said that. And I wanted you guys to see this, this website, because I, I meant to mention that Jeannie Boyce is like a very, she's like got a million years of experience. She's, you know, she's up here in Kingston, Jeannie Boyce, realtor, Boyce Brothers, Dairy, so she's someone who's also not young, who's also not like super digital, whatever. I love her feed. So she has 800 followers, top producer, real estate agent, Ulster Duchess Orange and Sullivan. Her hashtag is called Jeannie Boyce, which is great. She has yeah. her highlights organized by listing. If you look at this, doesn't she look like she'd be a kind of a fun person to work with? Yeah, I, I'd like to meet her actually. I think we'd have there a good time. She's <laughs> yeah, here she is like cuddling yeah. her big dog. Yeah, I just wanted to thank you because I'm, I'm, I'm obviously I'm starting out, so I'm, you know, taking baby steps, but I'm doing, you know, at least one every day and I'm just trying to, you know, get more information on how to like structure the page and all that, but um, it's been fun and I've been getting feedback and, and people are commenting on my pictures, so I like that too, so. Yeah, just remember, it's seriously just like learning a language, so you're going to feel like really stupid for a fair amount of time and then you won't yeah. feel stupid anymore. <laughs> That's Thank what happened to me. Run, but thanks so much. Thank you guys. Enjoy Thank the rest you. of your day. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Megan. This was great. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. Bye.